Hi friends, and welcome to my new online course, Get Started with SQL Server on Linux. My name is Artemagis Artemiu, and I will be your instructor in this course. This course is very interesting. We're going to talk about the cross-platform support from SQL Server. Therefore, we're going to install SQL Server 2019 currently CTP3 on Ubuntu Linux version 19.04, and we're going to access this instance of SQL Server using Azure Data Studio, which is the official cross-platform Microsoft AI tool for SQL Server. So what will you learn in this course? This course, we're going to talk about the supported Linux distributions by SQL Server 2017 or later. Then we're going to see how we can install SQL Server 2019, currently CTP3 on Ubuntu Linux version 19.04. Moreover, we are going to talk about the available SQL Server command line tools in Linux and see how we can install these tools on Ubuntu Linux. Next, we are going to talk about Azure Data Studio, which is the official cross-platform SQL Server client tool by Microsoft. And last but not least, we are going to access SQL Server 2019 on Ubuntu Linux by installing and using Azure Data Studio. A few words about me. I'm a senior SQL Server and software architect. I have over 15 years of experience with SQL Server and .NET. I'm a former Microsoft Data Platform MVP. I'm a professional author and speaker and a certified SQL Server engineer. Now about the course requirements, you just need basic knowledge of SQL Server and databases. And of course, as always, the willingness and excitement to learn something new. Now about the structure of the course, the course consists of lectures, demos, and of course, a class project in the end, in order to help you test the skills acquired in this course. After the course, you will know what are the supported Linux distributions by SQL Server 2017 and later. You will know how to install SQL Server 2019 on Ubuntu Linux. You will also know how to install SQL Server command line tools on Ubuntu Linux and how to install and start using Azure Data Studio on Ubuntu Linux. Great, let's begin. Since SQL Server 2017, there is support for installing SQL Server on Linux. Let's take a look on the supported Linux installations of SQL Server 2017 or later. We can install SQL Server on Red Hat Linux Enterprise Edition. We can install it on SUSE Linux Enterprise Server, on Ubuntu Linux. We can run SQL Server on Docker, as well as we can provision a SQL VM in Asia. Installing SQL Server 2018 preview on Linux, it's a relatively easy task because there is comprehensive documentation provided by Microsoft. So we are going to see a live demonstration of installing SQL Server 2019 CTP3 on Ubuntu Linux version 19.04. Let's proceed to the demo. So here we are on our test environment. This is actually a virtual machine where the guest OS is Ubuntu Linux 19.04. Okay, the first step is to find the documentation provided by Microsoft in order to follow step by step the process of installing SQL Server 2018 CTP3 on this edition and version of Linux. So let's search for the documentation. So we find the official documentation Get Started with SQL Server on Ubuntu, part of Microsoft Docs. This is a quick start, and this is the URL. Okay, first let's take a look uh, on the prerequisites. We need an Ubuntu Linux distribution with version 16.04 or later, with at least 2 GB of memory. This is Ubuntu 19.04, so uh, it's a newer version than 16.04. I have two gigabytes of memory. And let's proceed to the commands. So the first step is to install the MS SQL Server package. So we copy the wget command, we open a terminal and we run it. Okay. We need to enter our password in order to get administrative console and next we need to register the proper repository 
Now, for installing SQL Server 2017, we can run this positive registration command. However, since we want to test SQL Server 2019 CTP3, so this is a preview um, version of SQL Server, we can use this repository, which is uh, the MS SQL Server preview list. So let's copy this and run it in our terminal. Okay, so we have successfully registered the proper repository for installing SQL Server 2019 CTP3. Now, the next step is to run these commands in order to update our repository and then install SQL Server. So let's run the update command first. And now let's start the installation of SQL Server. So now this will download um, the actual media of SQL Server 2018 CTP3. Uh, it is around uh, 224 megabytes, but if you have uh, a fast connection to the internet, it is just a matter of a few minutes. Okay, the media uh, was successfully downloaded and now the installation process starts. At this point, I would like to uh, mention that um, uh, it is, of course, obvious, but uh, I need to mention this. For this type of installation of SQL Server, for this live demonstration, for example, you need an internet connection. Okay, excellent. Now, in order to complete the setup of SQL Server, we need to run this command. This command is also included in the quick start documentation. You can see it here, but it is also reported by the installation wizard of SQL Server. Okay, now let's clean the screen and run the command. So this allows us to set up the installation of SQL Server. As you can see, now we are prompted to select an edition of SQL Server. At this point, I would like to mention that it is critical that you select the proper edition of SQL Server. For example, uh, this is a CTP, so I'm going to select the evaluation edition, which is free. Uh, if it was uh, a release to manufacturing version of SQL Server, for example, if we were installing SQL Server 2017, if you were installing uh, SQL Server on a test environment for non-production purposes, you could uh, um, select, for example, developer edition, which is free, or express edition. However, if you select a paid edition of SQL Server, for example, standard, enterprise, enterprise core, or web, you need to make sure that you have also purchased the proper license through a retail sales channel and you have a product key to enter. Okay, now, since this is a test environment and we are installing the CTP version of SQL Server 2019, let's select one, which is evaluation. So here we are presented with hyperlinks to the license terms and if we agree we need to type yes otherwise we type no. I agree with the terms so I type yes and now I am prompted to enter a SQL Server system administrator password. That is actually the SA user's password. So yeah make sure that you entered a secure password. Let's confirm. Here we get a message that this is an evaluation version of SQL Server. And there are 173 days left in the evaluation period. Now we can see that some more features are being uh, enabled for the for this instance of SQL Server. For example, force flash. And finally, we get the message setup has completed successfully, and that uh, SQL Server is starting. So the last step in this live demonstration is to confirm that actually, yes, a SQL Server service is up and running. In order to do this, we run a system CTL 
status command. So we go to the quick start and we copy this command. So actually this command instructs our Linux system in order to check the status of the MSSQL hyphen server service. So let's go back to the terminal and execute this command. And you can see that the SQL Server service is active, that is running. And you can see here the original timestamp where SQL Server was successfully started, that is 54 seconds ago, where the installation of SQL Server was successfully completed. Now that we have successfully installed SQL Server 2019 CTP3 on our test Ubuntu Linux virtual machine, the next step is to install SQL Server command line tools also on this distribution of Linux on our test environment. So why do we need these tools? We need these tools in order to be able to run T-SQL statements on the SQL Server instance. So for doing that, you can either use Azure Data Studio, which is cross-platform, and we will talk about it later, or command line tools. So what are SQL Server command, li command line tools? The command line tools uh, are SQL CMD, which uh, allows you to run T-SQL statements, system procedures, and script files through a variety of available modes, as well as BCP, which is the bulk copy program, which allows you to bulk copy data between an instance of Microsoft SQL Server and the data file in a user-specified format. Now, let's install SQL Server command line tools on Ubuntu Linux uh, version 19.04. The procedure is to import the public repository GPNG keys, register the Microsoft Ubuntu repository, update the sources list and run the installation command with the Unix ODBC developer package. Optionally, we can add the path to our uh, SQL Server command line tools to our path environment variable in a bash shell in order to be easily accessible. Let's proceed to the live demonstration. So here we are back on our test environment on Ubuntu Linux, and um, we are ready to install SQL Server command line tools. Uh, the procedure for doing that is included in the same quick start documentation we checked earlier for installing SQL Server on Ubuntu. So if we scroll down the document, we can see that in order to proceed with installing SQL Server command line tools on Linux, first step is to import the public repository in gpng keys. In order to do that, we need to run this curl command. However, you can see that uh, the command curl was not found because this utility is not installed on our Linux virtual machine, but we can easily install it with sudo apt install curl. So we copy this command and we run it in order to install this utility. Okay, so now we are ready to proceed with installing the command line tools. So we run the care command first in order to uh, import the public repository GPNG keys. Let's clean screen. So this uh, first step was successful. Now let's register the Microsoft Ubuntu repository. Okay. So now let's update our sources list and run the installation command with the Unix ODBC developer package. Again, we need to check and accept or not the license terms. So now the installation process continues. Again, more license terms. And the installation was successfully completed. As an optional step, we can add uh, the path of our SQL Server command line tools to our path environment. So I will do that. 
So I can just run this command. As well as we can run these commands here in order to make SQL CMD and BCP accessible from the bash shell for interactive non login sessions. So again, we modify our path this way. Okay, excellent. Now we have successfully installed command line tools. Now let's see another interesting aspect of working with SQL Server and Linux. In this lecture, we're going to talk about accessing SQL Server 2019 on Ubuntu Linux using Azure Data Studio. Now, a few words about Azure Data Studio. Azure Data Studio is a free tool. It is Microsoft's cross-platform database tool for its on-premises data platform, SQL Server, as well as for its cloud-based data platforms, Azure SQL Database, Azure SQL Data Warehouse, etc. It is cross-platform, and that means that it can run on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. It offers rich, customizable dashboards, and it is extensible. Now, the current system requirements about Azure Data Studio is that you can install it either on Windows 10, 8.1, 8, or even Windows 7 with SP1. You can also install it on Windows Server 2018 R2, 2012, uh, 12 R2, 2016, and 2019. You can also install it on Mac OS 10.13 High Sierra or Mac OS 10.12 Sierra or later. Moreover, you can install it on Linux, so that is, uh, for example, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7.4 or later, 7.3 or later, SUSE Linux Enterprise Server version 12 SP2 or later, as well as on Ubuntu Linux uh, version 16.04 or later. The system requirements are constantly updated, so you can check often this URL for these system requirements and you can learn more about Azure Data Studio on this URL. Last but not least, note that about Windows, only 64-bit versions are supported. Now, let's install Azure Data Studio on Linux. So we are going to install Azure Data Studio on the same Linux virtual machine we worked in previous lectures and live demonstrations. So that is Ubuntu Linux version 19.04. And the procedure is straightforward. Therefore, we are going to download and install the latest release. So we are just installing and launching the tool. And if there's an issue, we can install as well missing dependencies. Okay, let's proceed to our demo. So back on our test environment, on our virtual machine, let's download Azure Data Studio for Ubuntu Linux. So we search for Azure Data Studio on download and eventually we end up to the official Microsoft website. And here we have access to the installers. So you can see that here there are installers for all platforms. There is installer for Windows, for Mac OS and Linux. I'm going to use the tar.gz installation package. So let's download this. And I'm going to save it. The installation media is about 124 megabytes, so allow a few moments in order to download it. And in the meantime, below on this official website, we can find installation instructions. So we are downloading the TAR GZ installation media, so this is the procedure to follow. Let's take a look if our installation is completed. So we need some more time. And right after installing and trying to launch Azure Data Studio, if there's a problem, we can check about any missing dependencies against them based on this excellent document. By the way, while waiting for the uh, installation media to be downloaded, we can copy these commands 
and prepare them from execution. As you can see here, we need to replace this words version string with the proper version of Azure Data Studio that we are downloading, which is currently 1.8.0. So let's open a word processor and paste the commands there in order to modify them. Okay, these are our commands. So we replace this string with the proper version we are downloading. Okay. And the next one as well. Okay, our commands are ready. Let's go back to our uh, inter browser and check if the installation is completed. So not yet. So currently I'm experiencing a slow internet connection, so I have to wait a bit more. By the way, if you don't have an internet connection, you can uh, download the installation media from another uh, computer and you can place it on your Linux environment in order to be able to proceed with the installation procedure. So now we can see that our installation media for Azure Data Studio has been successfully downloaded. Let's check its location. So let's right click on it, open containing folder. You can see that it is in my downloads folder and this is the name of the file. Okay, now let's go to the web processor and start copying and executing the commands. Let's clean our screen and okay. So now let's change directory to downloads. Okay, that's good. So now let's, let's extract the contents of this um, archive. Let's delete this empty space here. So yeah, let's run this command in order to export. And now we are exporting all uh, Azure Data Studio files from the archive. We downloaded it from the official website from Microsoft. Okay. And let's update our path variable. And the last step is to start Azure Data Studio. Yeah, so if this is the first time you are working with SQL Server on Linux and you are in the process of connecting to the database engine using Azure Data Studio, pretty sure that you will consider this moment as epic, <laughs> just like I did when I first did this. So now let's connect. Here, let's just put a local host with a dot, for example, and let's log in with the SA user we created during the installation of SQL Server. Okay, let's connect. And you can see that we have successfully connected to our instance of SQL Server 2019 CTP 3.0 on Ubuntu Linux. Let's maximize this. And now we are running a graphical uh, user interface tool that is Azure Data Studio, an excellent client tool for SQL Server, cross-platform, and in this uh, Linux environment, we can access our database and run queries. For example, let's type here new query, and let's create a new database. So we have IntelliSense, uh, we can work with SQL Server just like we work in other operating systems, for example, in Windows or on Azure SQL database. So it is business as usual. So let's create a database. Let's name this database TestDB1. And yeah, the database has been successfully created. Now let's change the context of our query window to this database we created. And this is test db1. Now let's create a table. So 
So let's include two columns, an ID column, which is primary key, and the code varkar50 um, column. Let's run the command. Also, let's import some data now in TBL test. Excellent. And let's run a simple select query in order to check the table's contents. As you can see, the IntelliSense feature is really amazing. These are the contents of the sample table we have just created and populated with test data. And let's export this as CSV. So let's export to downloads folder, for example, or documents. And let's name our file results.csv. So let's save it. And this is our file. So now, if you really want to work cross platform, you can backup the database with a backup command. You can restore it on another operating system with SQL Server, the, the same version or a newer version. So you can really work cross platform. Now let's recap what we have learned in this course. In this course, we learned about the supported Linux distributions by SQL Server 2017 or later. We've learned how to install SQL Server 2019 on Ubuntu Linux. We talked about the available SQL Server command line tools in Linux and so how we can install the SQL Server command line tools on Ubuntu Linux. Then we talked about Azure Data Studio, which is a cross-platform SQL Server client tool by Microsoft. And last but not least, we saw how to access SQL Server 2019 on Ubuntu Linux by installing and using Azure Data Studio. So what's next? If you want to stay up to date with our latest videos, do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We regularly upload educational videos on different interesting technology topics such as SQL Server development, administration and tuning, Azure SQL and other cloud computing topics, programming and .NET, Entity Framework and much more. Thank you very much for watching this video.